uh, Joseph Fonseca and I'm from uh, WSO2 API Manage team. So today I'll be uh, talking about uh, what are the most commonly used uh, ways uh, on extending the functionality uh, of WSO2 API Manager. So uh, one of the key, key values uh, in the WSO2 API Manager uh, is, the, is the ability to extend it. As you know, it's uh, being an open source uh, project, so you can uh, go up to the code level and uh, do any customizations that you want, uh, that uh, you might need uh, for your business uh, work. So uh, before I go into the details, I'll, I'll explain about the, the four components of the API Manager. So as you can see, uh, mainly consist of uh, store and publisher, which are web apps uh, that use to uh, publish and to subscribe to APIs. And also we have the gateway, which is a primary component uh, on handling the API traffic. And also we have the key manager, uh, where the authentication and authorization uh, is done. So, uh, I have like uh, 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 put the, the the customization and extending ability in, into following areas uh, of the API manager. As you can see, uh, there's mediation, security, business process, APIs, uh, branding, and uh, source code. So before I get into the details, uh, one key key thing that you have to consider. Uh, when extending and customizing, uh, it's like uh, uh, after some time, you would have to migrate your system into a newer version. So if you haven't done the uh, extension, extending and the customization uh, in a standard uh, way, uh, then you'll uh, get into trouble when you try to uh, migrate to the newer version. So it's always uh, good to... Uh, trying to find uh, what are the recommended ways uh, on uh, extending the API Manager capability. Uh, in, in the system, so uh, we have like different mechanisms uh, to extend the functionality, but in some cases, uh, we might have to uh, dive into the code level and uh, do the changes. So first, uh, I'll start with the mediation. So uh, uh, what you are seeing here is a, a, a flow of the requests that coming uh, into the API Manager. So uh, when a request comes, uh, that request will go to a in sequence uh, in the gateway. And then uh, after the in sequence, it will uh, go to the backend. And once the uh, backend replies uh, for the message, it will go through the out sequence. So uh, if you want to mediate, uh, you can use this uh, in sequence uh, and out sequence uh, to do uh, whatever transformation and changes uh, to the message. So in API Manager case, so what you have to, so let's take an example. Uh, let's say we get a, a JSON request and the backend service uh, is implemented in uh, XML. So we want to transform the incoming JSON uh, into XML and send it to the backend. And once the backend uh, respond with an XML uh, response, we want to turn it back into a JSON. So in order to achieve that, what we have to do uh, is to put an ex extension uh, to the in and out sequence. So the way to achieve this is uh, we uh, in the registry there's a location called custom sequences. So and uh, that location is divided into three sections uh, in uh, out and fault. So you can write any uh, custom sequence that the ESB understand uh, and upload it to that location. So once you have uploaded uh, the sequence, when you go to the publisher and uh, when you go to the manage 
section of the API, uh, it will list the available uh, sequences for in, out, and fault flow. Uh, so uh, before you publish the API, you can assign these uh, sequences uh, to a particular API. Uh, then the uh, actual API uh, will, will be get attached with these sequences. Uh, the next uh, mediation mechanism uh, are through handlers. So this is uh, how the normal request goes through. So uh, in API Manager, we already have a set of handlers uh, to uh, provide authentication and also throttling and uh, analytics. So uh, the sequence, uh, the request that comes into the gateway will first uh, hit the handlers in the handler chain and uh, it will get executed uh, one after the other. After that, it will go to the in sequence and go back uh, to the backend service. And uh, once again, uh, when the message comes back, it will go through the handler chain and go to the out sequence, and the response will be sent back to the client. So if you have published an API, if you go to the the Synapse file, the API file uh, of the gateway, at the bottom you would see this, these particular handlers. So as you can see, uh, these are the default handlers that comes with the uh, API manager. So you have the authentication handler, and also you can see uh, API throttle handler, uh, and other handlers uh, uh, which, which, are, which comes uh, by default. So uh, uh, in this uh, list, uh, first we have the cost request handler, and the second, we have the uh, API authentication handler. So one thing you have to remember, like if you're adding in a handler, uh, is that the API authentication handler is the first handler to get hit. So if you want to do some mediation before authentication, you have to put the handler uh, before the authentication handler. And uh, so uh, let me explain uh, you on how the API Synapse file is generated. So basically, we have a velocity template file uh, which uh, generate the, the Synapse config uh, of an API. Uh, so what API Manager does is, so when you uh, press the Publish button, it will uh, create the context object uh, with all the metadata that you entered uh, into the API manager and pass it to the velocity template file. Uh, and here, we uh, read those metadata uh, from the context, and then we generate the, uh, 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 the API synapse uh, uh, using this. So if you want, like uh, to customize how the synapse, the final synapse files get generated, you can uh, customize this uh, velocity template file. For example, uh, so this section is, uh, this is just the part of the velocity template uh, which uh, uh, generate the handler list. So here, if you want to put a handler, you can put above the for each loop. Or if you want, you can completely remove the for each loop here. So that will uh, prevent the default handlers from getting applied to the API. So, and uh, you can put whatever handlers uh, you want uh, uh, into the template file. So uh, the next uh, area uh, that we provide extension uh, are the security. So when it comes to security, as you know, uh, the main uh, authentication uh, protocol, authorization protocol that we use uh, is OAuth 2. So as you know, OAuth has uh, certain grant types. So one extension point is to add new grant types uh, based on your business requirement. And the, the second way is to write a completely new uh, authentication handler. So 
let's say if you want to use uh, basic auth uh, instead of OAuth, so you can add a uh, authentication handler uh, uh, to uh, uh, authenticate the uh, API request with basic authentication. So uh, when it comes to grant types, uh, these are the primary grant types that we support. And also, uh, we support some extended, extended grant types like uh, SAML to bearer uh, and NTLM grant types. So if you are writing a new grant type, all you have to do is uh, extend this uh, interface. So here uh, I have put a snippet of the password grant handler. So again, like if you want to just do a simple modification, uh, for example, if you want to attach the user's email address in a, a password grant type to the token, you, you can simply override the password grant handler. Otherwise, like if you want to write a completely uh, new grant type, you can extend this uh, particular interface uh, and uh, get your requirement working. Next, once you have the, the grant type implemented, uh, all you have to do is uh, configure this uh, in the identity XML uh, of the API manager. And also, again, like I mentioned, if you want, uh, you can uh, add your own uh, authentication handler uh, into the API manager template. So the next extension point uh, is business process. So by default, we support uh, following workflows like user sign up, application uh, creation, API subscription, and application registration. So uh, this is uh, a typical flow of a uh, uh, process. So by default, we have some uh, uh, workflow executors, simple workflow executors. What they do is they simply uh, uh, allow that particular action. So like if you, uh, uh, if a application is created, that particular simple workflow engine would be triggered and it will allow that particular task. So if you want, uh, you can configure an external uh, workflow engine. So in our case, you can uh, configure BPS, WS2 Business Processor. And once you have configured it, uh, the API manager, when you do a workflow action, it will uh, do a service call to the workflow engine, and uh, it will go to a suspended state. And once the the workflow uh, engine uh, approve the, the particular action. Uh, it'll uh, do another service call to the API manager, and that would complete the action. So uh, how you can extend this uh, workflow functionality? So you, you have like two choices. Uh, if you uh, want to customize the business process, uh, you can do that uh, in the, the workflow engine itself. And if you want to customize the, the workflow executor, uh, you can also, uh, uh, you can uh, add new uh, data and other requirements uh, into the workflow executor. So the next uh, area of customization is the branding. Uh, as you know, uh, store and publish app uh, comes uh, with a customizable theme. So by default, uh, a theme of the store consists of uh, jaggery templates uh, that used to generate the page structure. And uh, then it also has the JavaScript and the CSS files uh, uh, that will be used to uh, render the final pages. Well, so like if you want to just do, 
if you want just to change the colors uh, and some branding, to add some branding uh, into the header. Uh, you can uh, simply do it through CSS and if you want to customize the page structure, you can uh, modify the jaggery template files. And uh, the store app is uh, located uh, store app is located uh, in repository deployment server jaggery apps, uh, and also the publish app is uh, located in the same location. Uh, and the team, Teams folder is, uh, so once you go into the store app, the theme folder is uh, under site uh, themes. So, uh, so these are the contents of the default uh, uh, theme that we ship. So as you can see, it has a folder called templates, so that uh, directory con consists of templates of all the uh, pages. And also, there's a directory called sub-themes. So basically, uh, a sub-theme gives you the ability to extend upon an existing theme. For instance, let's say if you just want to change a few CSS files, what you have to do is uh, you can create a sub-theme, and you can add the CSS files to the sub-theme, and it will override the, the CSS files of the, uh, the parent theme. So once you have, the, have a, a, a theme implemented, you can simply uh, configure it in site.json file, which, uh, which is under store site uh, conf directory, and you can uh, change the, the themes from here. So if you only have a base theme, the application would be rendered with the base uh, uh, theme and templates. And if you put a sub-theme, uh, if, if a sub-theme has like overriding files, uh, it will override the, the base templates with them. So this is like a, a, a theme that uh, we are working on. So this particular theme is uh, fully responsive and uh, built with uh, Bootstrap uh, 3. So uh, this is like uh, a complete revamp to the uh, existing uh, uh, default theme uh, uh, on API Manager. So this particular theme is simply a sub-theme. So what we have done is, uh, we got a, a Bootstrap uh, theme template from Bootswatch, and we included that uh, theme to override the, the Bootstrap file of the uh, main theme. So as you can see, you can uh, get a complete look and feel change uh, with some simple uh, CSS file modification. And also, this is a feature in our Cloud app. Uh, where you can have like uh, separate themes for each tenant. Uh, this is there in the standalone pack as well. Uh, so if you go to the admin app, uh, you are able to upload a custom theme for each tenant. And also I would like to uh, talk a bit about APIs uh, and how our customers are using it. So currently we have a set of uh, APIs uh, that some of our customers use to implement their own uh, store, uh, and maybe to integrate the application creation functionality uh, into their own CMS. And also, uh, uh, we are coming up with a new RESTful API, uh, which is more intuitive and uh, covers all the functionality of the API manager. So finally, uh, I'd like to talk a bit about uh, the source code of the API Manager. So uh, you can find the source code on GitHub. So this, uh, there's like two repositories. Uh, source code uh, resides on two repositories. The, the first one 
uh, Carbon API Manager repository has uh, all the features uh, that are required uh, for API Manager. And the second one has the like, code that uh, actually builds the final product. So if you want to uh, build the source, what you have... Yes, so if you want to build... <laughs> so if you, if you want to build a source, what you have to do is first uh, clone the Carbon API Manager repository, and uh, you can run uh, Maven Clean install and get the features to build. And then again, uh, next what you have to do is uh, you have to clone the product API Manager repository and then uh, uh, build it via Maven. So that will uh, uh, so yeah, that will uh, create the final uh, pack uh, under product uh, target directory. So finally, like if you are modifying the API manager, we would like if you can uh, share the changes back to the community so you can uh, send us a PR uh, where we can uh, discuss and merge them with the final product. And also uh, you can uh, give us uh, feedback on uh, our uh, uh, issue tracker. Uh, and also you can uh, uh, take part uh, in discussions uh, related to API Manager in uh, the following uh, mailing list. Right, thank you.